Hi everyone, it's Tony Campana at Tony Murray's Creations and I am with you today to show you a project that I've created. It's actually going to premiere tonight in our um, North Carolina Demonstrator blog hop. We do a blog hop once a month and um, several demonstrators from North Carolina participate. And this is what's going to be posted on my blog tonight at 8 o'clock. So you're going to get to see how I've actually made this project. And bear with me just a second. I want to show you the stamp set that I'm going to be using for this project. And the project is actually going to be using... The sand and sea, uh, almost the entire suite. Um, I think the only thing I'm not using are the embellishments. And there's a picture of the embellishments. I didn't use that on my, my projects, but I certainly could. Um, but I've used just about everything else in this bundle. And I just wanted to let you know, uh, so this is in our mini, our January to June mini catalog. This catalog will be retiring um, at the end of June. And right now, this bundle is on back order because the embossing folder that goes with it is currently out of stock, but it will be back in stock uh, sometime next week, the week of the 29th or this coming week, I mean. So this is such a beautiful, beautiful um, suite of product. If you like the beach or the, well, I'm from New Jersey, so we call it the shore, <laughs> um, you're just gonna fall in love with this set because the images are just amazing. The colors in the designer series paper are uh, just a lot of fun to work with. So let me move the book out of the way and show you what the projects are. And I just will say that the um, projects I'm going to show you or the finished product is going to be slightly different than what we make today because I'm just using different papers. But I created a diorama card. And the diorama card is one that stands up. It's got a little window so you can see... It's kind of a, well, it is a 3D, not kind of a 3D. But I've used on this finished project a piece of this beautiful DSP that's got, I'm not quite, I think they might be sea urchins on the paper. And then the sentiment is on the back on a card like this. So I made the diorama card and I've made a coordinating gift box. And this is a nice size box. Um, it's an inch deep and the finished box is four inches, four inches by three inches. So you can definitely put a gift card in there, but you could certainly put a lot of other uh, little gift items in there as well. So this is what we're gonna do for our project today. And again, I'm just gonna, what I'm using um, for the materials for this video are going to be just somewhat different um, because of the, uh, the designer series paper that I had left to use up. So I'm going to talk about what we're going to use for the card first. So let me lay these pieces out. Okay. One of the um, other beautiful pieces of this suite that we have is this pearlized paper. And I'm not sure if I'm going to really be able to get um, the effect or if you're going to be able to see how, just how pretty this is. But it's definitely a pearled look, very shiny on the paper. Uh, so we're going to use a piece of that. This is five and a quarter by five and a half. We're using a piece of Seaside Spray that is also um, five and a half by four and a quarter. Let me go back to this. Five and a half by four and one quarter. The Seaside Spray, five and a half by four and one quarter. 
The designer series paper is five and a half by four and one quarter. And I have cut an oval out of this for the window in the diorama. And what I used for that is our lay layering oval dies. And I will tell you that these dies are going to retire in our annual catalog. So if you don't have these dies and you really want them, I strongly advise that you get them ordered uh, sooner rather than later because once they are gone, they're gone. Um, they won't be in the new catalog that comes out at the beginning of May. So I used two of the dies. I'm gonna lay them back in here so you can see. So it's the second from this largest set of plain ovals and then the largest of the scalloped ovals. So I'm gonna just close that, move this out of the way for a second. So I die cut my cardstock here and it left me with this piece of um, cut out, which we're not gonna use in the project, but definitely set that aside because you can use that for something in the future. And then I also, out of a scrap piece of seaside spray cardstock, I cut this frame. So what I did first on my piece of paper, uh, the measurement for that piece of paper is three and a quarter inches by four. So the first thing I did was I laid the scalp circle on it first and then cut out that circle. And then I laid this inside of it. You can cut them at the same time. As you see, they nest in here perfectly. Um, to do this, I would make sure that you're using washi tape so that your circles or your dies don't shift because you do want to have that even frame as your end result. So um, if you're going to try to cut them together, that's fine. Just make sure you put a piece of washi tape when you're running your paper through. And then out of the pearlized paper, I also used a one and a quarter inch by one and a quarter inch piece of paper. And I cut out the smallest circle out of the stitched shape dies. And the stitched, st stitched shape dies, easy for me to say, is also a set of dies that are retiring from our annual catalog. And I am going to miss those dies so, so much because I use them all the time. And let me just show you real quick which dies I'm talking about. So this is a set that's got square circles and ovals and it's just perfect um, for card designs because it gives you all the shapes that you might wanna use and the stitching around it gives it just that little bit of extra um, emphasis in your die cut, which I love that as well. So I'm gonna be so sad to see these retire. Um, they will stay in my personal stash for sure because they're just fantastic dies. But again, since they are on the retired list, if it's something that you think you may want to order, grab them now because they're not gonna be around for very long. So let's get back to our card, I'm gonna move these, oh, I'm sorry, there was one other piece that I didn't mention. Um, you're gonna need a piece of uh, basic white card stock and that measures three by three and three quarters and this is gonna be used for your sentiment, okay? So on these two pieces of card stock, the Seaside Spray and the DSP, I took and I already scored these just to save a little time. So you come in one half inch and score, and then one inch and score. Flip your paper over and do the same measurements, one half and one inch. So you do that on both the DSP and on the cardstock. We're gonna work with the card front first, and I want to attach my oval frame, make sure I've got the 
correct side. And I like to use the mono adhesive liquid all purpose glue for something like this. And a light touch is what you'll want. You don't want to glop this on here because if you do, uh, when you go to apply it, you're going to have all that extra glue come out from underneath your paper and you don't want that. So I'm going to lay that over here. Okay. And the liquid glue just gives you a minute or two for you to align everything, make sure it's exactly where it needs to go. Okay. And then I'm going to set that piece aside because I want to let that dry. Now I'm going to bring in a few of the stamps from this stamp set and my Seaside Spray uh, ink pad. And I can't remember, I just looked at our inventory status report before starting this video, and I can't remember if this ink pad has uh, retired or not. I know this paper is not available any longer, unfortunately. That sold out very quickly. But there are other shades uh, within the designer series paper that you could use um, to make this card as well. So one of the stamps in the set that we're gonna be using is this little bit of seagrass. So I grabbed that stamp and I wanna just put a little bit of action here and I'm kind of moving it up and down the paper and I'm stamping it kind of full strength for the most part because the seaside spray is a really light ink. So I'm just going along and stamping that. Okay, I'll set this. So actually, while I still have this open, I'm going to stamp my sentiment. We'll go ahead and get that stamping out of the way. So I love this sentiment. Um, friends are like seashells. You collect them along the way. And I think that's a perfect sentiment. It's great for a beachy themed card. So I'm going to stamp that in the center. And then I'm going to come and use the sand dollar. And I'm gonna put that down in the corner a little bit. And we'll just go ahead and get our stamping out of the way so that we can move the ink pads. So I'm going to stamp on this pearlized circle that I'd shown you a little earlier. But because this paper is coated, it's shiny and coated, you're going to want to use stays on ink. Stays on is a solvent ink and it's not going to smear when you um, stamp it on this, this type of paper. If you were to try to use Memento um, or our classic ink pads, it's going to very easily smear when you're trying to stamp your sentiment and we don't want that. So. I'm gonna stamp that and I'm gonna set that aside because we're not gonna put that on until I think the very end. Okay. So what I want to show you now is what I feel is the, probably the showstopper for, for me with this set. Um, we're gonna take this piece of pearlized paper and in the stamp set, you get this very large die that has several different types of seashells and some seagrass and stuff um, in it. And I cut the paper five and a half by four and a quarter, so it fits perfectly in this uh, for this die. And let me grab some of my samples here. So when you die cut this, it's going to come out looking like this. See, I forgot to pop out a little piece there. So it's going to come out, you're gonna have this flat image of the seashells. I still didn't get that out. Okay, so you'll get this die cut, but the magic comes in when 
you use the Stampin' um, embossing folder for this set, and it's called uh, just Seashells, Seashells 3D Embossing Folder. And this is what's currently on back order. And I'll see if you can kind of see the detail here. Um, but it puts all the impression in the seashell. So what you do is, and this is my recommendation, this is what I think works best, is to cut first and then emboss. Um, if you emboss your paper first and then run it through the die cutting and embossing machine, you're going to flatten out the detail that comes in when you emboss. And the neat thing about having the die cut is it fits perfectly inside the embossed image. So I'm holding the top of the embossing folder and I've just inserted this and just slid this around until all the images line up with the embossing folder. And then I run that through the die cut and embossing machine. And what you come out with is this amazing piece of artwork. And hopefully you can see all the detail that that embossing folder puts. It's just so beautiful. It just, And this piece alone can be mounted on a piece of um, designer series paper and then put in a pretty frame. It'd be a, a nice little accent piece if you've got a room that has um, beach decor or, you know, seashell decor, things like that. So absolutely beautiful just as it is. But what I'm going to do for this project is I'm going to take um, the completely embossed piece and I'm going to cut all those images out and so that I can save time this is what I come up with so I went ahead and cut this out so I focused first on the large pieces this the seashells themselves and then what I had left were these various pieces of what I call seagrass. And we're going to use them all in our project. But what I wanted to show you, and hopefully I can get this detail in here. So when you, you look at the embossed image, you'll see there's actually a border all the way around the shells. So all you're really needing to do is come in here with a pair of small scissors and just cut around all those images. It's like it gives you a little pattern to follow. Um, so you're just gonna snip these pieces apart and you will end up with all these individual little components to work with. Okay. So I know for my box, I want to use this large shell, this shell, and then I think it's this piece of seagrass. So I'm going to set those aside. And then I'm going to come back in and grab my card base. So this is going to be the focal point of the card. So let me bring the sample back in to show you. Okay, so you want that large shell to be in the center. So I just, initially, I would just, I just kind of laid this over here to kind of figure out position-wise where I wanted that shell. And it's not going to fit entirely in the oval, but I want more of the top to show than the bottom. So I just use this to kind of line it up and see where my image needs to be and I'm pretty close to the bottom here so that lets me know where I need to place my dimensionals if I can find where the oh here they are they got buried find where my dimensionals went so I'm going to take I just used three of the large dimensionals to hold this in place which I think is sufficient because this isn't really going to get handled very much 
so you won't need to worry about it coming off of your project. So again, I was you know, closer down here to the bottom and in the center. So I'll place that there. And then just to make sure, okay, that's where I want that to be. Okay. Now I'm gonna do a little bit of scoring. Actually, let me go ahead and put the sentiment on the back and we'll get that taken care of. Probably should have done that before you put your seashell on the front. It's just, I like working with a flatter surface versus something that's already had dimensionals put on the other side of it. Oh, now my tape runner is going to act up on me. Apologize for that. Oh, well, I'm certainly not going to fool around with that. Let me grab my liquid glue, which never lets me down. <laughs> Seems like I have a slightly crazy tape dispenser there. Okay, so I'm going to put that in the center. Okay. Okay, so the way your diorama card works is you're going to work on your folds and they're going to be opposite. So if my front is going to be I'm sorry, my base, I'm folding in at that, the one inch score mark on the one side, and then I'm going to go in the reverse direction for the half inch. So again, you're going to come in at that one inch score, and you're going to burnish and then bring this piece out and burnish that, okay. And then on my front, I'm going to do the opposite. So where I'm gonna fold this down Fold this in the opposite direction. Okay, so that goes down. And this goes in the opposite direction. Because we want to be able to join these two pieces and have them create the little window for your card. Okay, now you can attach this one either way, um, one of two ways. You can go ahead and just apply your adhesive while it's folded up like this. If you feel like you have a pretty steady hand and you're comfortable with doing that, I like to just fold it flat again. I really prefer working with flat surfaces rather than trying to um, hold up you know, hold it in the air and try to, so now I just have to worry about matching up these two sides. It's flat and then we can reshape the card once we get it together. So again, just a little bit of liquid adhesive. Because remember, it just gives us that ability to have a little bit of wiggle room here, so. I'm gonna just line up my two edges here first and then come over and press down. And if I need to slide or adjust, I have a couple of seconds to do that before this glue really sets up. And I'm just gonna, I like to burnish again when I'm using the liquid glue just so that I know my, my glue is set up. So now we're going to come back in and there. 
So now we have our diorama card. This is probably one of the easier patterns that I found for diorama. There are several out there that you can find that are a little bit more complicated where this just has uh, the back and the front. Um, I've seen them that has a third piece inside here where you're building additional um, layers and putting different things inside of that. I just wanted something that was pretty simple and uh, easy to put together. And the other nice thing about this is that the card will fold flat so you can fit it in a standard envelope. Um, it will fold flat this way, but you can also fold it with the pieces tucked in there and it works just as well. Okay, so now we're going to come along and we're going to use up the rest of these pieces that we have. And then you can decide how you want these to go in. I kind of tried to work with where there was a curve where I cut out. I kind of wanted to put that up around the, the um, oval. And this is where you're going to come in and do any, any fine tuning that you might need to do. And it's also important to make sure that you've got your embossing going the right way. So I'm just going to sort of lay this here. I'm not sure I want to use that one. I think I might go with that. Come in with that piece. Yeah, I think that's how. I might actually even cut this piece off because I think it's a bit much. Yeah, so I like that better. Okay, so I do have a couple of little pieces there that I'm not going to end up using. And again, I just put a few dots of my mono adhesive. Again, a lighter touch is what's best for this. Um, otherwise, you're going to have glue coming out. Underneath your image. And then you just reach in there and kind of press that down. And come in. I've got a little bit of a bigger border here with this piece of seagrass. So I'm going to put a bit of glue there, kind of stabilize it. Place that on that side. And I think I'm going to put dimensionals on these shells. It just kind of gives it a little bit more pop to the card. Okay. Peel off my back in here. I end up having these all over me when I'm done and they follow me all through the house. I find them in the strangest places. They're almost always attached to my clothing somewhere. Move some things out of the way. Clean up my workspace a little bit. I'm going to put this last I can't get that backing off. Put that over there. Now you can certainly build the front of your card before you attach everything, the front to the back. You can go ahead and put all that, those little pieces of shell and seagrass on that ahead of time if you wanted to. It's entirely up to you. But it just worked better for me the way that I did it. Okay, and the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this sentiment 
And you can kind of tilt it there if you'd like, but you're really only going to need to put dimensionals um, near the top. And I wanted to make sure that I didn't obscure the seashell very much. So it really pretty much goes up in that top corner when you place it on the card. And I just want to be safe than sorry. I'm going to put three mini dimensionals on that. that a little bit more in front of me so I can see what I'm doing here. Okay. And that is your finished diorama card. So again, this is a nice little um, decor piece too. It can stand up on a mantle, on a table. Um, I just think it just is a sweet little card and it's perfect for friends who or family who love the beach. Okay, so that's our card. And then next we're gonna move on to our gift box. And I love making gift packaging. It is really one of my favorite things to do. Oh, let me just show you so the difference, um, just by changing out the designer series paper, um, how different the cards end up looking and I initially did this, did my project in this paper because I thought it looked like waves, but I really have started to like it more with the pattern on it, I think. So which do you think? Which one is, is your, which one appeals to you more when you look at those two? Drop me a comment and let me know which one um, is your favorite of the two. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the box. And I've got a couple of different boxes. Um, two that I can show you. Um, see how different they look just changing out the the DSP, the designer series paper. And I did a little something different with uh, how I attached the bow and I'll show you that one as we're going through um, the instructions for how to make this. But the box itself, it's just two pieces of, of cardstock, a cardstock and the designer series paper. And the card bottom, which is the solid seaside spray, uh, that size is five and three quarters by five inches. And then the designer series paper piece is five and thirteen sixteenths by five and one sixteenth. Now those sixteenths are very important. So when you're cutting make sure that you are cutting on the exact um, place you need to be. So five and 13 sixteenths by five and one sixteenth. And in case you're wondering, when you're looking at a ruler, so where my finger is right here, it's the two inch mark. The very next little notch is the 16th mark. Okay, so for this paper, this end is the five by 13 sixteenths, and this side is the five by one sixteenth. So that one little notch is so important for making this box work properly. And once you cut this out, you're going to score on all four sides at one inch. And I've taken the time to do that before starting the video, just to save some time. So now you've got these two pieces and we're gonna work on the box assembly. And as as so I said, it goes together so, so quickly. So I'm going to take my box bottom first, and I'm going to cut up to the very first intersection where the score lines meet. And I'm holding the paper more portrait, so the shorter side, the 5 and 1 16th inch, is what I'm cutting on. So I'm going to cut up on these two sides.
and then I'm going to just snip a little piece of paper off of these two tabs and it just makes it easier when you're putting your box together. It removes some of the bulk when you're trying to glue the edges together. Okay, so you're gonna turn that. The cut pieces are at the top now and you're going to do the same exact thing. And then I'm gonna do that same little snip that out and when you're working with designer series paper if you have a really busy pattern sometimes it works a little bit easier if you flip it over so you can visually see your score lines a little better which is what I'm going to do here and actually that score lines a little bit late so I'm gonna need a little bit of help there so again this is the shorter side of the box Flip that over and do the same on the other side. I mean, it's really working with this light paper is a. Uh... I tend to not burnish my folds until I'm done cutting. It's a just a personal preference. Um, you can certainly do all of your burnishing with the bone bone folder first before you do your cuts. I don't know that there's really a right or wrong way. It's just, again, my preference. Okay. And now I'm gonna come and burnish everything. And with my designer series paper, I really, because it's a bit thinner, um, I only burnish it once. Oh, the other thing is you'll decide what pattern you want to be showing on your box lid and obviously I want the one with all the shells showing. Okay, so I'm only going to burnish it the one time. I'm going to set that aside and now I'm going to come to the base of the box and I'm going to burnish this um, both ways in both directions and it's just because the cardstock is quite a bit thicker and I want to really break down the paper fibers. That's basically what you're doing. Well, not basically. That's what you're doing when you're burnishing is you're breaking down the fibers so that the paper will crease easier for you. So I'm going to flip it and just do the same, same thing. So now we're going to get ready to put this box together. So you're going to take your two flaps and you're going to fold them in. And this is where you're going to apply your adhesive. So when you're working with a 3D object, something that's going to be handled a lot in a box would be, so you're taking the lid off and putting the lid back on, you want to use something more substantial than just your basic uh, double-sided adhesive. You want to either use um, multi-purpose glue or you want to use tear tape. And again, I'm um, more inclined to work with the liquid mono adhesive because it just gives me a little more time to slide things into place. If I'm using the tear tape and I just happen to not line it up properly, then I've got to peel it apart and try to uh, nudge it back into place. So the other critical thing about working with the boxes is that you 
really need to make sure that when you're lining these up, that you are lining exactly edge to edge. You want that to be a very precise meeting of the corners. You don't want anything to overlap. You don't want to slide it a little bit one way and have some hanging over thinking, oh, I'll just trim that off. That is going to affect how your box lid fits. So if it's not really true in a nice, nice square joining, you're going to have some problems. And I'm telling you this from lots of experience of trying to make boxes or 3D items and they just just didn't work. They either the I couldn't get the lid on it or I had to crush it to get the lid on it and I found it's because I wasn't being very precise when I was joining the sides together. So it's really 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 important that you do that. So again, I'm just going to slide this over. And that liquid adhesive lets me have a little bit of play to slide it in place. And then I'll come over and do this on this side. Okay. And another way of doing it is you can just kind of lay it down on your work surface and just make sure that it's, it's joining up really sharply there. And I just come in and press on the insides. Make sure they're sticking. Okay, so that's our box bottom. And our box top, we're going to assemble it the exact same way, but what I wanted to point out to you is that you'll notice on the sides of the box, I cut out just small sections to give yourself something to hold on to when you're pulling the box apart. This is one of my trial and error boxes. My lid didn't go exactly right on this one, so that's why I was kind of um, struggling a little bit to pull it apart because I didn't line something up exactly right. So what we're gonna do before we actually start assembling this is um, I'm gonna use a circle punch. You can use really any punch you might have handy because um, you're just going to come in on this long side and you're going to, and I, I just eye it up. It wasn't anything I felt like I needed to sit down and measure. So I just kind of eye it up and I'm gonna take a notch out of that side and then come in and do the same thing. Kind of eye it up the same way. And if you are someone who likes to be very precise, then by all means, pull out your pencil, measure that all off and make sure it's exact for you. Okay. And now we're gonna come back and do the exact same thing. We're going to fold those flaps in and Come in with our adhesive of choice. I just do two at a time. That way I don't have to worry about my hand getting into the glue on the bottom here. Sticking it all over to me. And I'm going to again come and make sure that I am very tight against that edge. And this will actually set up and dry a little bit quicker. The paper's a tiny bit thinner. Okay. And then come back and apply, apply my glue to these last two flaps. Nice and tight, with no overhang. Okay. 
Okay, that should be good. Now here comes the real test. And we're doing this live, so I sure hope it works. <laughs> It's meant to be a, a tight fit, so you may need to just coax those corners in. And there you go. Ta-da! The box fits perfectly. The lid fits perfectly to the bottom is what I meant. And that just makes me so happy. <laughs> so we're just going to finish this off now, and we're going to decorate the top. And remember, I saved these pieces for it. But I wanted to show you something I did as a little trick that I did. Um, rather than wrap my ribbon around the entire box and tie it, so then when you open the box, you have to slide the ribbon off and, you know, the ribbon gets misplaced and um, I just like to keep it, everything nice and neat. So I have two pieces of Seaside Spray Metallic Ribbon. Again, this is an item that's gonna be retiring. But I cut a piece that's seven inches and a piece that is five inches and on the seven inch piece I just came and took a couple of pieces of tear tape I love this stuff um, you may remember or you may still work with the red line I think they called it red line tape that was a good project for good for projects that were 3d as well but boy I'm telling you peeling off that layer on that tape was never fun for me I, that ended up being stuck to my arms and everything else because of the static electricity with it it was always such an ordeal so now i'm going to come inside my my box lid and i just want to put it on the edge here maybe leaving a quarter of an inch i guess it doesn't have to be precise but i came in and peeled off my tear tape layer and sometimes this will get a little fussy with me too because you're adhering it to um, a piece of ribbon and as I said about a quarter of an inch try to get this a better camera I just laid that in there wrapped it around Depending on how far you put your adhesive up on it, you may have some that can still grab. And then bring this other end around. And remove your adhesive. Well, that one worked a little bit better. I just make sure that it's kind of snug on the outside there. And come around and lay that on the inside. So like I say, the seven inch piece works perfectly for wrapping it around the outside of this box and leaving you enough room on the inside and then I just did the five inch piece and you could probably work with a bit shorter piece if you want but I, I like having something to hold on to when I'm trying to tie and I just did a simple knot if I wanted to do a bow I'd probably tie that piece a little bit longer and just snip that off And now I can come in and finish off with my, my pieces here. So I know I'm, I'm just gonna glue the seagrass piece down. And again, as I said, there's, there's plenty of room here that you can put a good bead of the mono adhesive down on it. use my other box just as my guide to see how I did that and I actually you know you can put it over top of your ribbons because your ribbon is secure it's not going to go anywhere so lay that down and then again dimensionals for this generous when it comes to my dimensionals. I'll just go ahead and finish this piece while I'm at it. Yep, 
didn't really want to <laughs> on that. There we go. So this would be a perfect little box and card again to give someone birthdays coming up or uh, any kind of celebration actually it would work. I'm not really sure which way that shell is supposed to go but it's going this way on my box. I just kind of press down and make sure that they're holding up well there. I'm going to come in and put this little guy at the bottom. And there you have it. And by adding that little bit of um, ribbon, it really doesn't hamper the, um, the box lid going on. <laughs> I say as I'm trying to get the box lid on. It really doesn't. I've done about seven of these now, so I do know what I'm talking about with that. Okay, there you go. So there's your finished box. And what did I do with my card? Oh, here it is. There's the finished card of our sand, 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 sweet. Um, love it, love it, love it. It's a, a perfect set for the beach lover in your life. And as I said, it's um, this set will be retired. Well, no, I'm sorry. The colors that we used are definitely retiring and the designer series paper is retiring when the mini catalog um, leaves us in June. But the stamp set and the die and the embossing folder are going to carry over to our new 2021-2022 annual catalog. So I'm so happy to see that it's going to continue being available to use for projects because I know there's going to be other things I'm going to enjoy working with for this. So I hope you enjoyed the projects. I strongly encourage you, um, if you are interested in, in buying this set, um, do it now while you get the 10% discount off because when it does move over to the new catalog, it will be separated. You will no, no longer be able to get the bundle and save yourself 10% on purchasing that bundle. So again, you can shop at Tony Marie's Creations at stampinup.net to purchase these beautiful, beautiful products and hopefully uh, create your own projects, beautiful projects with that once you have it in your hands. So thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the projects. Um, if you have any questions, please drop them. Um, under the video and I will be sure to get back and answer them as quickly as I can. Thanks again for watching. See you soon.